wedding bands, each a full circle, emblematic of endless love, serve as the ultimate symbol of the marital union. But in this seemingly age-old tradition lies a modern question. Do wedding rings have to match? Well, put on your wedding finery and grab a glass of champagne because we're about to give a toast to wedding rings. And there's more to the story than meets the finger. The tradition of exchanging wedding rings has a history as rich and enduring as the love they symbolize. It traces its origins back to ancient Egypt around 6,000 years ago, where circles were seen as symbols of eternity and betrothed couples would exchange rings made from braided reeds or leather. Later adopted by the ancient Romans, the tradition expanded to the placement of these rings on the left-hand ring finger, a position rooted in the Roman belief in the vena amoris, a direct vein that led from this finger to the heart. It doesn't exist. Sorry. Still, this tradition, much like the practice of the giving of rings itself, persists to this day. When it came to those earliest rings, not only did they not generally match, it was extremely rare for both parties to have one. Usually, a woman was given a ring as a symbol of her husband's commitment and of his ability to provide for her. As centuries passed and attitudes toward love and romance changed, so did the concept of wedding rings. The notion of both spouses wearing a wedding band popped up sporadically throughout history, early inklings of today's more equitable exchange. During the Renaissance, for instance, many European husbands gave their wives gimel rings, composed of two interlocking bands. Throughout their engagement, each half of the couple would wear one of the bands. Then, during the marriage ceremony, the groom would give his ring to his wife, reuniting the separated bands back into one. Matching, but not exactly the same matching of rings we have today. When it comes to the modern matching of wedding bands, each spouse wearing visually similar bands, the tradition is a relatively recent one. It wasn't until the 20th century, around World War II, that matching rings, at least for couples in the West, became commonplace. There were a few causes of this. First was the Great Depression, which saw a decline in the sales of almost everything, wedding rings included. In an effort to increase their dwindling sales, jewelers launched marketing campaigns promoting the idea of male bands. Second was the rise of mass production. The crafting of wedding rings by machines made it easier to create identical rings. If all of this sounds a bit unromantic, don't get too downhearted just yet because the third reason matching wedding rings grew in popularity is sweeter, even if it came during some of the world's hardest times. During World War II, soldiers started wearing wedding bands that matched the rings their wives wore as reminders of their families back home tangible connections to their loved ones that brought comfort amid the challenges of wartime separation. But traditions born of war are not always long for a peacetime world. While matching rings might have been as expected throughout the 1940s and 50s as the I do's and the white wedding dress, by the 1960s society was starting to change and ideas about marriage along with it. Fast forward to today, we find ourselves in a world where individuality is celebrated as much as unity, where the question of whether wedding rings should match gets more complex. In this era of embracing uniqueness, the answer isn't always a simple yes or no. It's more about asking what feels right for us. So, do your wedding rings have to match? No, of course they don't. They can be as unique as the two of you, signs of your love, but beacons of your individual styles. You can find appeal in celebrating each other's distinctness, the beauty in your diversity, the charm in your contrast. But what if you're torn, pulled by your desire for visual harmony on one side and your desire to maintain your personality on the other? Well, you do have some options for bringing the individual notes of your wedding rings into a more harmonious tune. If you prefer your bands to be kindred spirits rather than identical twins, consider a design element that unites them instead of matching bands. One option is to blend metals. Take, for instance, one band in classic yellow gold, paying homage to tradition, while the other features contemporary rose gold. Each carries a hint of the other's color, creating a subtle connection. You can also opt for matching gemstones. Different bands, same embedded stone, or even different gemstones. One popular option is to get your partner's birthstone on the inside of your wedding band, a secret reminder only you know is there. 
As far as secret connections go, engravings can also play an important role in this matchmaking game. We'll call these the inside jokes of wedding bands. To the observer, your rings may look drastically different, but within, they tell the same story. Etched with a matching quote, date, or symbol that holds special significance for you as a couple. When it comes to your wedding bands, whether they match or don't match, the essential thing to remember is they are a symbol of you as a couple, of your relationship, of your connection. While matching rings are one clear way to show your bond, they are not the only way to show your bond. The key to achieving unity without sacrificing individuality lies in those subtle connections, the fine details that weave a cohesive narrative. When it comes to picking your wedding bands, try to think of it like a karaoke duet. You don't have to hit all the same notes, but it can be pretty sweet to find some harmony. Rigid tungsten carbide rings, simple, but as heavy as the love between you and your loved ones. For our full selection of rings, visit us at theartisanrings.com.